you to be seated. And if there are any young people under the age of 105 who are willing to come up and join me right here for a children's message, that'd be great. You don't want us to sit down here. Awesome. Awesome. Good to see you, everyone. So nice to see you this morning. And I, uh, if, let me just mention, if anybody, uh, when you were coming in, there are some color things here that you might have saw on the floor. If you didn't get one and you want one, did anybody not get one and want one? There you go. Let's see here. Yeah, there you go. There's still waiting for some out there as well. Well, let's see. A lot of times in church, we read something called, out of, you know, we read out of, what's that called? The Bible. And the Bible isn't a book, it's a collection of many books. And I'm going to just mention that there are, there's part of the Bible we, we read out of, they're called the Gospels. There are four books that are called the Gospels. And anybody, does anybody know what any of those are? Those would be Matthew, is the first one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Can you say that with me? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And those are the first four books of the New Testament. And this year, our whole church is reading through, and the churches around the country and world are actually reading through the gospel or the book of Luke. And we're saying Luke. Luke. So many of our Bible readings, uh, most of them, the course of the year, will be from Luke. Now, Luke is the only one, I mean, he talks, let's see, he's not the only one, but he talks about money and wealth and the dangers of wealth and poverty, the most of any other of the, of the, of the books. So, one of the stories, well, today we're going to hear out of the Bible, Blessed Are the Poor. And as I was thinking about the different stories in Luke that talk about the poor, I was reminded of this. There's a there was a there was a rich man and he, he had a bunch of stuff, a bunch of crops. And what happens if you have a if you have a bunch of something and you don't have any place to put it? You could sell it. That's something you could do. Yes. What's that? You could uh, give it to other people that need it. This particular person said, "Oh, I've got all this stuff." And it won't, I can't put all of the crops in my barn. I'm going to build a bigger barn. That's what this person in this story said. And so while I was thinking about this, I was noticing in my bedroom, was I, I don't have a barn in my bedroom, but I have this. What do you think this is? It's coins. And what do you think the holder is? It's a jar. Do you, need, do you already have piggy banks? Yeah, this is kind of my piggy bank. <laughs> and and if it, when it gets full, I've got some choices, don't I? If, if I don't have any more room to put it in there, I could get a bigger one, right? Or uh, I could get another one. That's, that's an idea. Or I could do something with what's inside, right? Well, then, it, then I was like, wait a second. We are borrowing these today for worship. 
You know what they're called? They're called bell chimes. Actually, that's the correct name. Yes, they're called chimes. And in fact, we I'm, I'm borrowing some from another church, but we got we got some money from an organization called Thrive It, $250 from them. Then somebody in our church heard that we were wanting to get some from for ourselves, and they gave five hundred dollars. And I thought, well, that's not very much left. If it, they cost a thousand, we only have to give it like two hundred fifty dollars left. So then I said, well, why don't I just empty this, and maybe I'll invite other people to bring their coins, and we can put it in a noisy offering. And when you have a hundred people who put in, it's only like ten quarters each, something like that. So anyway, what I'm wondering is, would you be willing? Can I just empty my little my, my little bank here now, and then would you be willing to make some noise on your way back to your seat, and then you can help us? Uh, Come up and play the chimes, and then maybe we'll be able to have enough money to buy some for ourselves too. Does that sound good? All right. Tell you what. Let's pray, and then um, come by and, and grab some grab some noisemakers on the way by. Does that sound good? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for all of the ways you bless us. For all of the ways you bless us. Help us. Help us to be generous. Be generous with what we have. With what we have. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, just hold some on your cup and we'll, I'll just sprinkle some of it. Too. You, might, you, you gotta get a lot though. Because you're gonna have to help me. I gotta empty this. So make your make sure, let's see. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Should they put it in their pocket and bring it home? Uh, yeah, I mean that's an option too. <laughs> Yes. So you want to put more noise over here. Yes. <laughs> a lot more noise. Okay. As big as your hand will fill. Here we go. Oh. There we go. There we go. Yes. And make sure you come up at, at the offering time. Yeah. Stanford. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and children. We have turned our faces away from your glory, when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word. And lead us from ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us so welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us so that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sin is forgiven. You are the descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you made all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, we make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our story, God's story, continues today with the reading from Luke 6, verses 17 to 26. And we have two sides. Side one will be over here, and side two will be over there. And we'll sing first. The Gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. trying to touch him for power came out of him and healed all of them then he looked up at his disciples and said blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of god blessed are you who are hungry now for you will be filled blessed are you who weep now for you will laugh blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you and defame you on account of Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are happy now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Stay tuned for the continuing saga that is our story and God's story. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as I was reflecting this week about this Bible passage, 
I was talking to Heidi a little bit, and we were both kind of wondering why is it that this particular passage is less familiar than the Beatitudes, which we find in the Gospel uh, of Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount, in which there are nine, blessed are the, whereas here there are four, blessed are, second person, you, with their corresponding woe to you. And I was wondering, could it be that pastors such as myself are a little, a little more hesitant to just preach on this? Because there's a, there's a hard message with some of these woes. Uh, hard message for some of us to hear, myself included. And uh, where does this story fit into my story? As I mentioned to the young people, Luke talks more than any other gospel writer about wealth and poverty. Uh, it's the only gospel where we hear Mary singing, where she sings that the, that the, uh, that the rich would go away hungry and that the poor would be filled with good things. It's the only gospel where, where Luke is found in the, uh, where in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is found in the synagogue, reading from the scroll of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And so here we have now this passage uh, from Luke. This passage, this Sermon on the Plain, where he really does seem to be trying to level the playing field. Now, he does go up the mountain shortly before. He's been up the mountain, but not to preach, but to pray. And when he comes down from the mountain, he is among many disciples. We don't know how many, but from among those many disciples, he chooses 12. 12 apostles. 12 sent out ones. And now he's with those sent out ones, the apostles, the 12, and then the other disciples that didn't make the cut. <laughs> oh, they're feeling, I'm not sure. And then the crowds, the crowds from down south and Jerusalem and all of Judea, the crowds up north on the coast, Tyre and Sidon, and he's there and they're there to be healed and to hear. And like my mom likes to say, we're waiting with bated breath. She would use that term, and you know, they're there. Speak to us, Jesus, preach. And he starts. Blessed are you poor, for you will be filled. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, when they reject you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day. Leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. And that is what their ancestors did for the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will weep and mourn. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. There was a rich man decked out in the fancy, in the latest, greatest, fancy clothes, wasting away his life in conspicuous consumption. And there was, a, there was someone who had been dumped on his, his porch steps there. Lazarus. Lazarus was a man covered with sores. He was poor and was just hoping for some crumbs to drop from the table of this wealthy man. And the dogs were Lazarus' friends because they'd come and lick his wounds. Well, when Lazarus died, the angels took him up to Abraham and 
and and and, sh and the rich man died too. And when the rich man saw Abraham and Lazarus off at a distance, he said, "Father Abraham, have mercy." Have mercy, my tongue is on fire, my mouth is burning. Would you send Lazarus to dip his fingers in some cool water to cool off my tongue? Abraham said, Child, remember in your life, you, you had the good, Lazarus had the bad. It's not like that here. Here, Lazarus. Lazarus is consoled and you are in torment. And besides, there's this huge chasm that cannot be crossed. Well, can you at least then send Lazarus to my family? I've got five siblings and I don't want them to be living in torment like I am now. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. And uh, Abraham says, no, that's what Abraham said. And Lazarus said, yes, but they're not listening. If someone were to come back from the dead, then, then they would listen. And then and Abraham said, well, then if they don't listen to Abraham and the prophets, why would they listen to someone who's come back from the dead? Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who are weeping now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people reject you, when they hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you, when they defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and weep for joy, for Surely your reward is great in heaven. And that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But now, woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who, who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will be and woe to you when all speak well of you, for that's what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Now there was this person who came up to Jesus in the, in the uh, crowd and, and said, Teacher, would you tell my, my sibling to divide up the family inheritance equally? And Jesus said, What's, what, what business is it of mine that I should be your mediator or your judge? And then Jesus went on and looked at everyone and said, Take care and be on guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he told them this terrible. He said, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. So much so that this, that this farmer said, what am I going to do with all these crops? Oh, I know I'll, I'll tear down these barns and then I'll build up bigger ones and I'll store all the crop and grain and everything away and I'll say to my soul, soul, Take it easy, relax, eat, drink, enjoy, be merry, for you've got enough store away for a long time. And then God said, fool, tonight you will die, and then whose will all this be? For so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Blessed are you poor for yours is the kingdom of God. Jesus was entering at Jericho, passing through. And uh, there was a man there named Zacchaeus, head tax collector, a wealthy guy, and as we remember, kind of short. And he wanted to see Jesus, right? And so 
He couldn't, so he ran up ahead and climbed up in that sycamore tree. And when Jesus was coming on by, he said, come on down, Zacharias, I'm going to your house today. Well, Zacchaeus was pretty pumped. And he came down that tree and was happy to welcome Jesus. And everybody who saw this, they were like, what's he doing going to the house of the sinner? Zacchaeus said to Jesus, I give half of all my wealth to the poor, and if I've cheated anyone, I give, give back fourfold. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, son of Sarah, he is a child of Abraham. And the human one has come to seek and save the lost. Blessed are you, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who are weeping now, for you will laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, when they reject you, and defame you when they revile you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy just as the child leapt in the womb of Elizabeth when she was in the presence of the Christ child. Rejoice, leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you, the unrich. For you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will weep and mourn. And woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are the holy are you. Rejoice and be glad, yours is the kingdom of God. Yours. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are they who doubt, those who aren't sure, those who can still be surprised. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who've buried their loved ones, for whom tears could fill an ocean. Blessed are they who've loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who no one else notices. The kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables, the laundry guys at the hospital, the sex workers in the night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underrepresented. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard, for Jesus chose to surround himself with people like them. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people. Blessed are the burned out social workers and the overworked teachers and the pro bono case takers. 
Blessed are the kind-hearted NFL players and the fundraising trophy wives. And blessed are the kids who step between the bullies and the weak. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, for they totally get it. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Your response is here our prayer. Those who trust in you, O God, are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that is eroded after the deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of life, Amen. for peace among the nations, especially de-escalation of tensions between Russia and Ukraine, for the people of Ottawa, Ontario, as protests against COVID restrictions continue, for an end to gun violence and for comfort for the family of Deshaun Hill, his death this past week, for your invitation to recognize and reverence your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge it and uproot it from our society, from our world, and from ourselves. God of life, send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation, tend to all who struggle with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. And grant peace to all who suffer. Today, we pray especially for Sandy, for Paul, for Lee, Andy, Heather, Corey, Raven, and Portia. We pray for housing for Phyllis and others in our community. We pray for all who suffer from cancer, for Betty, Carla, and Tina. We pray for Nathan and Chelsea and their new daughter. And for all those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of life, yeah. renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan, as we dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us and give us a vision for where you might lead us. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, yeah. since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and in faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Now, during the offering, we are actually going to practice. And so uh, I invite any young people under 105 to come up. And we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna take this time to actually practice the closing song. I'm gonna pass out some uh, some chimes. So come on up and choose a chime. And then you know what? If you see I want to make sure every chime that has a color on it goes to uh, somebody. So uh, there might be some little people who are older than 20 that might have to help us here. Let's see. Somebody, just find it. There we go. All right. 
Right, so everybody else here can help us by singing. We're going to sing. Now, let's see, how about you stand on the other side of the altar there, and we're going to sing. Come on over there, and then make sure you can see. And when you see your particular color is when you're going to play. All right, so everybody, who has pink? Anybody have pink? Good. So let's just try this one. If you have pink, try it with me. Go now. And then if you have green, get ready. Go back to pink. Now. And if you have yellow, go now. Back to pink. Now. And so try pink again. Go now. Go.
To, to be able to get, I just want to say a, a thank you to Thriva to uh, get a $250 grant towards our own set of these and uh, um, uh, giving fam a family from our congregation who heard about we were wanting to raise some money and provide another $500. And so these cost about a thousand. So I think I figured out if everybody gave about, you know, a hundred people gave 10 quarters, that would be what? Is that about right? That'd be about 250 times a hundred. Is that right? Math, man. My math? I was thinking with these quarters. Does that sound right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, this week and next week, we'll have a noisy offering for those chimes. As the person who I was talking to on the phone who gave a generous donation said, Yeah, I said, That'd be great. Then we'll leave, you know, room so everybody can be part of it. And this person wasn't trying to make a joke, but they said, But that'll give other people a chance to chime in. <laughs> Indeed, welcome to this table. Uh, this table that is 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 not mine or yours, or yours. And I invite us to pray together around this God of all good gifts, who gives freely to us, who offer us new beginnings and guides on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In our sharing of bread today, we include in companionship the saints and the saints resurrected and the saints alive. In our sharing of bread today, we include the poor, marginalized, and rejected of this world. In our sharing of bread today, we include those known to us and those not known who need Jesus now. In our sharing of bread today, we include in companionship Jesus, our incarnated, broken, and risen Lord. Amen. And I just want to pause for a moment and, and just just double check with the ushers to see if it, who might have snuck in and didn't get a, a, a cup. Okay. Did anyone not get one? Just gonna make sure. And feel free to kind of get ready. I heard some already some cellophane being pulled back. They're a little harder to get open, so feel free to kind of get ready. And then after we pray together the Lord's Prayer, we'll all we'll all join in communion together. In the night in which he was betrayed by his best friends, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to those same friends saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. As our ushers collect the empties, we invite you to sing. God, you have called us adventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untried, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us, and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Why does our church exist? What is our purpose? We go out to transform lives through Jesus Christ. Yes, some of the ways that we are connecting as a community this week. Uh, let's see, Bev from Common Cup will be here on March 6th uh, to speak about Common Cup and some of the important ministry there. Um, and we are right now collecting juice cup, juice boxes and diapers, sizes five, four, five, six, as well as pull-ups. Uh, bring those in, and I know Andy's collecting those and taking those in. So we can bring the office or do that. Wednesday, coffee will be at the hotel lobby this week. If you're interested in stopping by. Gene is here from Thrivent. Where are you, Gene? There you are. Thanks for joining us today. And, and uh, uh, Gene brought the donuts, which are over here, and with the coffee. And then also, you'll see a box of them over there. And that is where, uh, if you're interested in gathering with, with us over there, to hear how Thrivent can partner with us some maybe some ways to use those action those 250 dollars action grants that we have thought about or there's something also called choice dollars that oftentimes people who have thrive and don't even know about it's money can direct towards a place like river Polk if you so choose to please join us over there for that tuesday the 15th is laundry love uh, you can sign up in a couple different ways through the church office there's also a sign up sheet online Dave Melinda Pedersen, uh, online marriage encounter coming up this February 18th. Uh, next weekend, the 20th, Skate and Soup over at uh, Bar okay, Bernard's. I talked to Tiff last night and uh, would like, you, you, you don't have to RSVP, but if you thought, hey, I think we might come. Uh, let me know and I can pass that on to her or she's also probably going to put something up if you happen to be connected to our Facebook group page you can let her know there as well but we're going to do some skate and have some soup 
Either you, should, either you can come in the gap or you can either take and eat outside or take, take it with you. Uh, pens and prayers, neat opportunity to gather. This is at Heather at, at May Fisher's house. This is coming up on the 22nd. Uh, that's two, next two, a week from Tuesday night. Uh, to write some cards, to make some cards, to gather with a small group of people who uh, are, are doing that. That's a, a neat, neat ministry. Other purpose sightings. I'm sorry? Yes, so on this Wednesday, uh, con if confirmation students are going to gather for practicing instruments. And that, I think, I sent out an email to some instrument players about that, but I think it's 4.45 and 5 o'clock. I think that sounds about right. Yes, so that's this Wednesday. Thanks for bringing that up, Nate. And at this time, we invite you to, uh, while we're singing, come on up. Uh, if you have something to share, a milestone, something significant in your life this week or this, this past month. Come on up. Um, so, which is great. Um, I go to, back to every three month MRIs instead of every two month MRIs, which I'm grateful for. Um, although I snort in the entire uh, MRI, which is ironic. Um, apparently, I'm still 15. Uh, but that's great. I will take it. So, um, last one on that. Oh. And now may the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, journeys with us, be upon us now and forever. Amen. Amen. And for our closing song, instead of percussion instruments, we do have these chimes, so come on up. And we're going we're to send you out with Go Now With God.
in Christ, child. And indeed, we invite you to go now with God to serve in peace and to, well, to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.